Welcome back, Rebel, to REL Division 5C Recap. Week 2. Let's take a look at the outcomes. So, looking over the win-loss ratio here, we've got a tie from the Chaos and the Underworld Denzins. Bretonians win against the Dark Elves 2-1. Uh, the Nurgle spits and swallows over the High Elves 3 cannons minus 1. And then... The Dwarves, 2-0 over Spa. I'm going to start calling you Spa. Spooky action. Um, spooky action was... Da -da -da, necro! So, in my last recap, I thought this was going to be a tie. I was wrong. I thought the High Elves... Well, I thought this one was going to be a tough one, but I was. Uh, I thought the Nurgle would win it, and I was right. Uh, this one I thought could go either way based on dice. I was hoping for Dark Elves and Bretonia did it, but honestly, uh, we'll take a look a little bit closer at the uh, after game report and see if we can kind of figure out what happened or why it happened. And then this one I thought Chaos would have it, and I was wrong. So only one out of four did I name it right, but I did call a tie. I just called a tie um, down here, and one showed up over there. All right. So, oh, a level up needed. Um, let's go ahead and just take a look at some of the teams. Starting with Spa. So, the Medicinal Carrot. Honestly, I don't see a lot of change. Um, got sure hands on the Ghoul. So, that's actually pretty good. Uh, now, if he just stays alive. Um, I don't know if the block on the Werewolf is, a, is an update or not, but it's still a good... It's not the best level up, obviously. People want Mighty Blow or, you know, other fun stats up. But Block is a good, solid choice. Um, let's take a look at y'all's history against the Dwarves. So, the Dwarves did have 13 armor breaks. But uh, act, the Spa had 11. They also had two expulsions. So, Dirty Player must have not had a chance to do too much. Um, statistics tell us four KOs inflicted and one injury inflicted. And one KO inflicted, two injuries inflicted. So that's kind of funny. Um, dwarves taking more injuries than the others. And the blocks, 44 and 45. So the Necro gave as good as they got. They just got outscored. SPP, MVP, and two injuries. MVP two touchdowns and an injury, so that kind of kind of sucks. Let's take a look at the dwarves armor. Yeah, to see thirteen out of thirty six, um, thirty seven percent armor failed. That's pretty high for a dwarf team. What in the world were you doing for eleven dodges? That's crazy. I mean. It won two zero, so it can't be too out of the realm of, of sanity. GFIs, that honestly looks pretty good. I mean, I think it may have went your way more than it didn't, since you only had two out of nineteen failures. Pickups fifty fifty, that's kind of to be expected. Uh, fifty fifty catch, not bad. Uh, Dwarven bombing it again, still two out of one, uh, two out of three passes succeeded. Uh, Low on the ones compared to the sixes, so fives and sixes, 52, and then 40 on ones and twos. So, I feel like maybe the dice might have helped you get away with some stuff. Let's see how the block dice went. Um, since you're dwarves, these are usually not as bad as these, so that's a lot of hitting. Uh, 30, uh, a defender down and defender stumbles. On a team with only one dodge player, amazing. And then since almost everybody on your team has block and almost none of the team has block on the other side, that's pretty good. So his block dice must look amazing. Let's take a look at that. So 19 skulls, 19 pals, 9 defender stumbles. That's really low. Uh 16 both downs. I don't know. They must have just came at the right time. Yeah, there's a double skull that got re-rolled into a... I'm not double skull, but double both down. 
There's a double skill that got rerolled. So reroll management went well, I guess. Um, let's take a look at your D6s. All right, try that again. There we go. So armor held the same, 63%. Um, but when your armor is eight, that's kind of to be expected. Uh, injuries. Well, these injuries are crazy. He only had two out of 13. You had seven out of 15. Catching impact of the bomb. So he must have bought that bombing dwarf guy for the giggles. Not a bad choice either. Um, I also like uh, the bomb blast guy who's like 60k for another runner who just happens to have Hail Mary. Uh, regeneration did half its work. Wake ups did not. Your GFIs, a lot less, so you weren't punished for it. Uh, pick up 50 50, dodging 50 50, and two attempts at interception, neither doing anything. Um, 21 21 sets so 42 versus 51 so dice a little bit on your side too but nowhere near as the dwarves so I'm I don't know man we, that's pretty wild all right so let's take a look at the necro team see how they came out afterward or that was the necro team let's take a look at the dwarf team and see how they've come out afterwards Okay, so one of the long beards is going to be out for the, the next game, but that's not that big of a loss. We have a runner with a wrestle, that's aka a safety. Someone to tackle um, ball carriers that have block. And that's it. Still got the same three guard, so not bad. Um, all that development is on the same few players. All right. Dark Souls, Bretonians. But up, up. Dusk Souls, I'm sorry. Dusk Souls. Oh, Strength Up Knight. Not bad at all. A couple of blodgers. Actually, three blodgers. The blockers are getting their guard like they want. And a peasant with dirty player. Classic. Let's see what the tale of the tape says about the Dark Elves. So they had one expulsion versus your two. 13 armor breaks. Everybody's getting passes. I love it. Keep up the good work. Eight KOs inflicted from the dark. I mean, from the um, the Bretonians. There is where things went horribly awry. Twenty nine blocks versus twenty successful blocks. Not a high bashing game, but a productive bashing game. When you've only got, let's call it thirty, and you have nine removals. I mean, that's a wonderful statistic. That is almost one third of them being removed. Cannot have a bad day with that when you're the one doing it. So three casualties sustained, but only one injury inflicted. I'm going to assume it's been a while, but I assume that means uh, some pretty bad stuns. Dark Souls getting a lot of good MVP, or not MVP, but SPP. 14 versus 9, 10, 13. So you know, both teams actually. Let's see what the dice tell us. Uh, since Dusk Souls won, let's start with them. The dice are not too uh, stretched out. 23 for this one shows where the high numbers were coming from, but if you're going to roll a lot of fours, that's not bad at all. Armor held well, especially considering a bit of the team is armor 7. Dodges did very well, considering most agility is 3. Uh, GFIs are all right. Injuries are all right. Casualties, 50-50 eh, wake-up call. Picking up with an agility three team, that's pretty normal. Uh, passing, however, that's not so great. Two, two failed passing out of three, but the catching went well, and considering four of your players have catch, that makes sense. How did your combat go? 
So, Tim Pals, 12 Skulls, kind of balanced. Both down, working well for you, probably, as long as you weren't Blitzer on Blitzer action. Uh, Defender stumbles. I don't think the Dark Elves have a lot of dodge, so I think you got away with that one. Let's take a look at the Dark Elves. Their combat rolls actually pretty amazing. Um, again, both down as long as it's your blockers, not against his knights or his wrestlers. So that actually might have worked against you. But this over here is a pretty good tail. As long as it wasn't the knights getting the dodges, you're doing pretty good. And how did your game dice go? Yeah, 38 ones and twos, and even twos on an elf team ain't always bad, versus 51 fives and sixes. So, definitely leaned a little bit your way. But that, oh, them, them getting knocked out like crazy. I mean, you rolled 12 wake up calls, and two thirds of them worked. So, uh, going for it well, dodged well. Armor doing what armor kind of does, unfortunately. Um, armor 8 on a lot of players. It should see a little bit better uh, return than that. Goodness. 50-50 dodge, uh, but catching, that's kind of odd. Uh, two out of three failed passes are kind of odd, in my opinion, as well. And then the pickup, that happens. Ones will happen. Pretty interesting. Let's take a look at the outcome for the Dark Elves. Queasy Phil. All right, so his kicking lineman is going to be out for the next game. Honestly, speed busted on the lineman whose kicking is not the worst thing in the world. Um, still got three blodging, one tackling blitzer. And he's going to have the Witch Elf back. So, probably missing her. That missing reroll, I wonder if that's going to make a difference. I also wonder if you're going to buy it. But running into the next game with 11 Elves and 11 Elves only. Might just be saving the money for a, a loner? Nah. I'm the only one who does that. All right. Nurgle over High Elves. Well, High Elves have a level up they need to do. But since this just re-rolled, I'm not going to give them too much of a hard time. Let's take a look at the Nurgle. I'm just looking over, and since two kills, one cup. Mm, gross. All right. Uh... I'm going to assume you did not get any rotters from the... You did not. There are no deaths. I'm wrong. There's one death, and it was on your team. Ah. Great. <laughs> well, at least a Nurgle leveled. Uh, I mean, a uh, Nurgle warrior. Catcher did pretty well. He's just one touchdown away. All right. So, one pass, one touchdown, four armor breaks, nine armor breaks. Elves getting 22 blocks versus the 31. That's not far from expected. Three injuries, two injuries, a kill inflicted. See, yeah, I mean, that's about the same outcome realistically. But they were just able to hold the ball and control it a bit better. Fast can and trash can both got five apiece. <laughs> One's an MVP and... The other one probably got a touchdown and an injury. So let's take a quick look here at the dice skin. So 34, 35, about even. 22, 29, about even. Mm, 64 versus 56. It's only a difference of eight. It's not big enough to really make that much of a difference, I think. Dodging. What is with. Oh, no, this is high elves. Okay. We want to... Well, we're already here. Might as well. Okay, that makes more sense. I was about to say, what is with all these crazy non-agility teams doing dodges? But this is an agility team. Armor holding 38% for armor 8. Doesn't seem off the uh, 
rails of, of possibilities. Tentacles doing what tentacles do, holding 8 out of 11 times. Uh, wake up calls okay. GFI's about norm. Picking up, passing, 50-50 uh, catch. I'm going to assume the disturbing presence did that. And then foul appearance only failed one out of five attacks. So realistically, you got away with that one. That's about norm. One out of six. Let's see how your block dice went. Block dice were kind of quiet, which is to be expected. You were probably outstrength several times. I like it. Eight, eight, and eight versus the five. That's not bad, though. This could work against you without too much block. Sending both players down, most likely, because I don't think they have too much block either. Let's take a look at their team. So we are looking at Spitz and Swallow. Let's take a look at their stats. Nice roll. Back to them. Armor hold pretty well. Really stupid. Not bad. Two out of 11 is aggravating, but not out of the realm. Injuries. That's crazy. So they caught. They dodged. But they only dodged once. GFIs. Probably infuriating. Picking up went well. And wake up 50-50. 27 versus 25. So no real help there in the luck. Oh, what's that? Two number threes out of all of these rolls? That's insane. Block dice. Block dice went pretty well. And nine both down, nine attacker downs versus 24 or 17 pals and seven defender stumbles. Oh, the block dice were kind to you, friend. Kind to you. Let's take a look at Ohio, see what they've got going on for their team. They will have their thrower back. They will be missing this guy, so... Blitzer leveling up, so shall we take bets on if he gets a stat, a double, or a regular? Though you cannot have too much trouble with a blodging dip. Blitzer if you do roll a, num a double. I mean, I'm normal. I mean, I have to assume this guy did a lot of work. He's taking a quick look. Three passes, one successful catch. He's at Conflicted a casualty and an injury. That's wacky. He has sustained seven injuries. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So two loner elves and at least another 20 here. So it's going to be 140. So you're going to be at 13, 10 minimum next game. All right, let's take a look at our last one, the dwarves. Versus spa treatment. Two expulsions versus one. Armor breaks about norm. Wait a minute. Did we already look at this? I don't think we did. I don't know. I feel like I have. We didn't look at this one. So we did look at those. All right. So. Let's take a look at the Chaos team against the Underworld. Children of Hell Pet broke more armor than the Chaos had. Broke, and they actually sustained a death. And their clawing mighty blow guy had an injury, but he's going. It looks like he's going to be all right. Uh, Thirty-five blocks versus twenty-seven. So eight removals. And 10 removals, one of which was a death. What in the world? Spread the SPP love around a bit. So I'm, I'm going to assume on this side that there was a troll working hard for his money. Let's take a look at the... Children of Hell Pit first. Armor being what it is, I, I understand he's got armor like, what, six? But still, to have 60% armor breaks, that's that's brutal. Casualties doing all right. Pickups, 
that's kind of to be expected, honestly, with an agility three and probably everybody on the ball. Passing with a stunty team, never a good idea. But it could be uh, rats to rats. I don't see any animosity roles, so I'm guessing everybody played nice and just stayed with their own group. Wake up actually leaned a little your way. Really stupid. The uh, trolls behaved quite well. Or the one troll. There's only one. 14 out of 8. Um, 16 turns. Yeah. And only one stupid. And probably even a loner reroll that worked. That went well. Dice definitely in your or in your favor. 49 versus 32. Not bad at all. Let's see how your combat went. Combat went all right. Um... 27 defender down and defender stumbles versus 28 both down and skulls and both downs as long as your blitzers are doing it not bad at all let's see how uh, the chaos did um chaos's armor apparently they must have bought it from herring zord cause Holy crap. 70% armor failure is ridiculous. I mean, even considering that the Claw Mighty Blow player would turn that armor into roughly 6, that's still ridiculous. Catches 50-50, pickups 2 out of 3, that's norm. Dodging well, that's exactly what it should normally be. GFI's got away with them. Wake up calls, nine wake up calls. And one loner who didn't do what he needed to do. 49 versus 30. Technically the dice weren't kind of in your favor. They just apparently didn't come up when you need them. And your block dice, 29, 25, actually comes out pretty normal. Look at this, a couple of three dice against goblins, I'm sure. Three defender stumbles against a goblin is all pushes. Unless you have tackle, which I don't think this team has. Look at that. Three both downs. That's crazy. Let's see if you have any more of those. Slot machine of block dice over here. Alright, so... Go back up to the chaos in a minute. Let's take a look at the help hit. All right, so we do have a blitzer now with tackle. I don't think he had that when he started. How is this troll not leveled up? So only inflict one casualties. Twenty-eight successful blocks. I mean, he had a great game last one. I. Hmm. A blocking thrower and a non-blocking thrower. And then some goblins that haven't died yet. Okay. 1160, very trim team. Got some money in the bank in case he wants to run some bribes and whatnot. Against the Chaos team. Now the Chaos team has been, as he said in the precap, paying iron prices. Um, Just... Seems to be keep running low on players. Um, Chaos Warrior agility busted and Beastman agility busted. But he does have two blocking, one tackling Beastman and a ball carrier. Um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So he's got all of his players back. And technically enough to buy a player, a, a Beastman if he wants to, but I, I doubt it. He's probably saving up for more Warriors definitely needs to replace these warriors that is just madness all right and i feel like that apothecary would probably need to be sacrificed not like remove him from the team like take him out stab him on an altar buy a new one something tells me he's been letting you down a lot there we go so that's the week in review let's leave week two and go to week three all right so our first one is 
Dark Elves versus Underworld. Now, me personally, I'm going to go with Dark Elves again. Though, Underworld definitely isn't going to be a cakewalk. They have... Well, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's take a quick look at Dark Elves. I like them, but they may not have this one. Uh, the Witch Elf's going to be able to push those goblins around a bit. Maybe even the, the rats. This pow, power bombing blitzer could also cause some trouble. Actually has a little bit of tackle. Um, got 11 to so 1270 versus 1160. So you're only, we are giving up 110 in, and he's got 150 sitting in the bank. That could be a real pain in the next star player, bribes, all kind of blood bowl babes. So those people getting knocked out don't stay out. Honestly, I'm actually thinking Underworld Denzen might get this one. It's going to be a rough game. So let's put it down. Help it. And the next one is the Swords versus Three Cans minus one. High Elves versus the Swords, I believe, again, are the Bretonian team. No, that's not right. The Bretonian team is Dusk Souls. The Swords is Chaos. All right, so Chaos against High Elves. Usually it's going to go to Chaos. Um, Hindi, however, does have a little bit of development on this team. Um... Yeah, that's right. He's going to be 13, 10. Got a little bit of block and a whole lot of dodge. Comparatively. He's going to have his Minotaur back, so... At least two Mighty Blows could make a big difference. He's got three block. One tackle is not enough tackle against all that dodge. Um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten... It's going to throw in the Beast Man, so that's another 8. So 1280 versus 1310. Not enough to really swing anything. Might be able to use a little bit of your bank for a Blood Bowl Babe, but what would be the point of that? Uh, you know, honestly, High Elves versus Chaos, I'm going to give it to the High Elves. I think they, as long as they stay out of the trenches... I think they'll get away with you. They got the better move. They actually have some skills. That's going to be a tough one. Bretonians versus dwarves. Oh, Bretonians. Bretonians. You actually probably have one of the few tricks that's going to aggravate the hell out of the dwarves. You got two guard of your own to, versus his three. But that ability to wrestle down and negate his block can become quickly a real pain in the neck. Um, hmm, you got a little bit of move advantage considering everybody on your team is as fast as his fastest players and then you actually have four that are a little bit quicker. Troll Slayer might actually get to use uh, Dauntless against your Blitzer 4 but it's probably not a big difference. This is going to come down to a lot of positioning. Um, I'm, I think this is going to be a tie. I think this one's going to come down 1v1. So we'll see how that works out. Those dwarves. They're solid, but... He's got one wrestler. I don't know. So 1,200 versus... 1310, you are going to be giving up some inducements. He could be playing the star player game. I mean, just for 1100, he could get Far Blast. That's a free character. And, um, and a Blood Bowl Babe. I mean, it's not really needed, but. All right, and then the last game Nurgle versus Spa. Nurgle versus Necro. Uh, the Necro is 1310, and they have a 13-player bench. Ooh, I don't know. I mean, honestly, firing one zombie does not seem like the worst thing to do. 
But then again, going down to 1270, how much is that going to make a difference? Versus spits and swallows, 1180. Well, you're giving up 1300, so. Or 130, so. 130K in inducements. Maybe going down 40 is not a bad idea. Put him under 90. But he's missing people. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. So he's going to get another 80 back. So he's going to be at 1260. 1260, that's only 50. You're, you're giving him a Blood Bowl, babe. And I assume you do a lot of kicking with zombies. Face stomping. Uh, Beast of Nurgle is going to have a heyday here tying up zombies. But... The Necro team actually can outrun a Nurgle team with one ghoul and two werewolves. If he even has a ghoul, he does. So the fours on the zombies and the flesh golems against the fives and fours of Nurgles is not a big deal. You know what, Necro, I think this is your week. I'm going to give it to you. Necro versus Nurgle. I think as long as you don't get stuck in the trenches again, you're going to come out all right. I know the frenzy blitzing attack is very addictive, and you, I but I think it's a trap, man. I think it's a trap. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. We haven't done that. We've we'll go ahead and let a few weeks pass before we took a look at it. Um, Hindi is. Two losses, the dwarves are two wins. Everyone else has a wide blend. I like to look here at the Children of Hell Pit. Two ties out of the two games they've already played. Pretty awesome, I think. So, not going to see a lot of strong pullout uh, leaders and losers yet. It's just getting started. But there you are. There's my predictions. There's week two wrapped up. You guys have a good day.